So a few months back, we did a video looking at watches of different occupations. Now, it was kind of a different, strange video in a way, but I think it's kind of cool to think about an occupation and try to give watches or recommend watches that probably would fit that type of just scenario and day-to-day -day lifestyle. So we're gonna do another one of those videos looking at some different occupations and different watches that could be associated with that type of occupation. Now, just a couple things to keep in mind. We're gonna look at a couple different options at least for each different occupation. The occupations chosen in this video are different than the ones chosen in the last video. So if you're upset about what was chosen here, just know that you can go look at the last one and see what was chosen there. In addition to that, this is supposed to be fun at the end of the day, so don't take this too seriously. I think this should just all be kind of in good fun here. And then finally, some of these occupations that were chosen in this video are a little bit more out there, but also were actually mentioned in our Facebook group when kind of posed the question, hey, what do you guys wear and what do you do for a living? So I thought it would be fun to kind of piggyback on those, use those as inspiration, and then also go a little bit further into recommending some watches. Now, before we jump into this video, I do want to mention a new watch that just became available at teddybaldesser.com with the Zenith Chronomaster A386. Fantastic looking chronograph, as well as being a watch that is now in standardized production. The A386s in terms of these Chronomasters were typically always limited edition models. So these are now available stainless steel, variety of different dial colors, also getting the 3600 movement on the inside that tracks a 10th of a second with that central seconds hand going around the dial once every 10 seconds. Pretty cool visual dynamic. And these watches, I think are just stunning and beautiful to look at. Check them out, teddybaldasar.com. Now for the first occupation here, we have journalist. And when I think of a journalist, I think about doing some in the field reporting and why not choose a field watch for those type of scenarios? And I think one of the best options here is with the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical. I think you can go for any of the options here in terms of what is providing probably the best value in terms of a field watch in the price range, 80 hour power reserve movement, price is around $500, wearable case, a little bit longer in the lug to lug distance, but in terms of value being packed within these watches, I just don't think you could beat the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical. And I think it makes a lot of sense for someone that's doing some in the field reporting. I think, you know, good option here. Now, since journalists Journalism is such a global type of pursuit nowadays. I think you should be understanding of all the different time zones in the world. So I think a world time type complication would be helpful in this instance as well as a GMT. So first talking about the world time, I'm gonna look at the Nomos Zurich. Now this isn't a true world time complication, but I think just the way that Nomos adapted this movement, really shows their creativity as a manufacturer, utilizing this GMT movement, the DUW 5201, a beautiful movement at that, and using it for this world time complication. Using the pushers along the side of the case and the crown, you're able to adjust those different uh, settings on the watch, including that disc with all the different time zones across the world. In addition, I think somebody in the world of journalism is always kind of in the know about certain things and kind of getting into things that maybe aren't appreciated by everybody and kind of bringing a story forth. I think Nomos is one of those brands that maybe doesn't get attention from everybody out there, not necessarily the most mass market brand, but something that I think would look great on a journalist's wrist. Now, another option, of course, is going to be a GMT. I'll throw just a couple options out there. I think a Zodiac Super Seawolf GMT would look great on the wrist of a journalist. I think this is some fun colors, eye-catching if you're on TV, maybe doing some on, in the field reporting. I think that would just kind of create a nice visual dynamic. Then you also have, say, you know, I've seen this actually on TV myself, so, you know, say you're a really well-established journalist and you've been in the industry for some time, maybe go for something like a Rolex Explorer 2. Kind of get that field watch element with a GMT. I think it makes a ton of sense. In terms of you're talking about the 16570, 216570, 226570, I don't think it really matters. I think they're all fantastic options and will do the job for this type of role in scenario. So now for our next occupation, and this was one that I was kind of referring to that's a little bit more outside of the box, but this was one mentioned in our Facebook group and I thought it was just such a cool, fun idea, and that is Brewmaster. So what do I think a Brewmaster should wear? Now, I would say somebody who is a Brewmaster probably, hey, maybe you're working at a cool microbrewery. I don't really know. I'm sorry, I'm now I'm stereo stereotyping, uh, but I think a micro brand only makes some sense here. So one that I would probably suggest is a Baltic Aquascaf. Let's do the dual crown version. Now there are quite a few different Aquascaf versions out there, but these I think create a bit of a different kind of look compared to some of the other ones out there. And I think they just look fantastic. In terms of this compressor style case that we're seeing a bit more of, this is one of the more probably attainable options 
out there on the market and done in a really great way in terms of the design. 39 millimeter case with that internal rotating bezel. So that's gonna make this wear pretty compact on the wrist. In addition to that, you're getting a Miyota 9000 series, sapphire crystal, and at a price range around $650, depending on where you live. There are some import duties and things like that you have to worry about, but certainly a great watch to look at. So when thinking about this next option and just generally about this type of occupation, I would imagine you're probably a bit more casual in attire. So going for something a bit more sporty makes sense and something that you could afford getting wet as well is important. But another element is just how does it look on the wrist and does it match the environment and what maybe you're wearing? I think the Oris Diver 65 Bico with the bronze and steel just look so awesome and I think would look fantastic in an environment like a brewery. You might have some rustic undertones with the brewery and where it's maybe sitting in an old warehouse I think we've all seen a brewery like that before. I think this watch would just look fantastic on the wrist. It's also gonna patina, which I think will just kind of create a cool visual look, but not so much so that you have to worry about the entire thing. But also with that element of steel, you're also going to get a nice mix of kind of consistent non-tarnishing that's gonna happen there. But for me, I just think this is such a good fit for somebody in this occupation. Now, next up, we have probably the most requested occupation following the previous video, and that is engineer. Now, in terms of how I look at this, I think there's probably just a variety of different ways that you can go, but in terms of actual functionality on a day-to-day -day basis, I think the Casio calculator, the CA53W, could be a great option here. For maybe doing some basic mathematics on your wrist, I think it makes some sense. It actually might have some function, although you probably could do most of these equations in your head, just given the type of strenuous studying that you have to do in college, being roommates with several engineer uh, engineers, uh, learn that firsthand. When you're talking about $25, getting some functionality, retro design, and I think just I think they're just fun at the end of the day. I think this is just a no brainer uh, for this type of field of work. And then for two other options here, I wanna look at basically, I mean, probably two different roads you can take, essentially a fork in the road, Rolex or Omega. In terms of which watches to look at, I think the Rolex Milgauss makes the most sense from the Rolex side of things, and then the Aquaterra makes a ton of sense with an honorable mention going to the Seamaster Railmaster as another option as well. With the new Explorer 2s coming in this year, I think the Milgauss is probably the one sports watch that is most due for an update. You're dealing with older generation movements here, but in terms of a watch that I have just grown to like a lot more, I think the Milgauss is just a really fantastic package, of course, being developed in the 1950s through its actual defense against magnetism. So it's really part of its DNA. I think those two lines are watches that still kind of have some enthusiast intrigue to them and haven't really been taken up by the hype train that is social media and what's going on right now with Rolex. On the other side with Omega, I'm very strong on the Aquaterra as just being kind of that do it all, maybe first luxury watch. But if you're talking about an environment like this, that's something an engineer might appreciate. I think you have to love what's going on uh, in a lot of aspects with the Aquaterra. For one, these were the watches that really kind of set the new standard of resistance and magnetism up to 15,000 Gauss. Um, you had those original Bumblebee options that were kind of unveiled, and those were, of course, kind of uh, cornerstones in the defense against magnetism. And in terms of what the Aquaterra offers now, uh, almost too much of a variety in a way in terms of all the different dial colors, case options. I think variety is the spice of life. It's fantastic, but I think the Aquaterra is so overwhelming at times to look at and what is actually at your disposal as a consumer, which at the end of the day, I think it's pretty cool. And if you are a fan of engineering, I would say the adoption of Dr. George Daniels' creation of the coaxial escapement in a mass market product, a luxury product from Omega, I think just is a pretty impressive feat for what they've done uh, since they've kind of acquired that technology in 1999. I think the Aquaterra is just a fantastic watch. Uh, I'm a fan of it regardless of who it's gonna be on the wrist of, but I think both the Milgauss and the Aquaterra are no brainers in this scenario. So next up here for an occupation, we have a pilot. So. For this, we're gonna go for something with attributes of great legibility, reliable, uh, also having kind of, kind of those aviation undertones that many people look for uh, when looking in the direction of these style of pieces. Now, one on the, say, more affordable end is gonna be the Citizen Promaster Nighthawk. Now, there is a new kind of generation of Citizen Promasters, and these are watches, just like the dive watch equivalents from the Promaster collection, are truly beloved by the people that they're actually created for and intended for. These watches come with an EcoDrive movement, a little bit of an updated design, dealing with some numerals here. Also, the loom, I find, is a 
bit better than previous versions of the Nighthawk. You're getting an isolated hour hand at that local time, which is also very nice and something you don't see in many watches in this price category. You get that nice 24 hour, 12 hour scale with the counterweighted extra hand with the airplanes at the end, which somehow doesn't come off as corny as it might sound when I say it out loud. It doesn't really look that weird at all. I think it's a really nice incorporation of this type of look and style that this watch is going for and also getting an EcoDrive movement on the inside that's gonna be reliable and really just give some good peace of mind when you're talking about just set it and forget it. Now from the luxury perspective, I think one of the most synonymous watches with Pilots has to be the Breitling Navitimer. This one looking at is going to be the B01 version. So the Navitimer is a watch that I think sets almost in a way the standard of what a Pilot watch almost looks like. It's a watch with a ton of history attached to it and maybe outside the Rolex GMT Master, maybe the luxury pilot watch to go for. In fact, the Navitimer has developed a reputation so synonymous and just crucial to flying that the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association adopted the Navitimer as its official watch. So that probably goes without being said that it's a great option for pilots. This watch also comes with the B01 movement inside Breitling's in-house chronograph movement, which is also seen in the likes of some of their other chronograph options but is definitely one of the leaders in the world of automatic chronograph calibers in this price range. Now for the next occupation, we have the mechanic. Now in terms of what I'm thinking about here, I think you need a durable watch, no question about it, a tool watch, also one with great legibility and perhaps some nice loom in the process, and maybe something you don't need to worry about as much uh, because there is a lot of steel, uh, a lot of things that you can bang into, and I think you want something that's gonna be reliable as well. So the first watch I'm gonna look at is the Casio Duro. Now this is a watch that probably doesn't need much of an introduction. It's one of the best, and probably best selling quartz watches out there on the market amongst enthusiasts. You're getting suitable water resistance, pretty solid loom as well, and a price tag of around 60 bucks. I mean, it's really hard to beat this thing in terms of what it is packing for the punch. And Casio pretty much is a cheat code in the world of watchmaking when it comes to value. I mean, everything that they produce is typically just outdoing itself in terms of the price tag. Now for this next tier, something a little bit more elevated in price, but also I think can still take a bit of a beating and then is going to be mechanical. I'd look at two tool watch brands, one being Ball. Probably look at their Fireman collection. One that I'll mention here is their Nightbreaker. This is a watch that I just think is pretty cool. Has a nice texturized surface, utilizes tritium, which has become a very prominent attribute of Ball watches in a brand that I'm very near and dear to my heart being from Cleveland, Ohio and the history of this brand. Uh, I've done some videos in the past and also reviewed this watch as well. And then the other side, you can also go for something like Damasco. In terms of Damasco and what they're producing for the money, I think they've kind of come in and undercutted Zinn in a lot of ways. They were actually producing uh, cases for Zinn in the past. So there's real credibility that when it comes to this manufacturer and what they're doing, they also have a lot of upped scratch resistance with their cases and their hardness. So typically 1200 HV on the Vickers hardness scales. So in terms of having to worry about this watch and you know taking a beating, this thing's gonna look great even after many, many wears. Next up, we have a chef. And now for a chef, I think there's a few different factors that you're going to want. I think some ability to time different events because I mean, when you're in the kitchen, you have many things going on, it's always frantic. I think having something, and even if you don't use it, at least at your disposal, at least will allow you to have some functionality with your watch is important. Legibility is important and also something that you can get wet. So the first watch I'm looking at here is with the Seiko Turtle, primarily with the SRPE 93. So this watch is a bit more straightforward in terms of a turtle variant, uh, pretty muted in its color profile, but I think it is classic turtle at the end of the day. You're getting Seiko's Lumabrite and honestly best in class when it comes to luminescence and looking great. Legibility is fantastic. You're also getting a diver elapsed time bezel, which might come in handy if you're timing maybe something in the kitchen. I think that's just good to have. Doesn't hurt, of course. And also having suitable water resistance of 200 meters. This is going to handle anything in the kitchen that you throw at it. So I think this is just a nice safe pick for a chef out there. And although I find a elapsed time bezel to be a little bit better at actually timing events in a chronograph, I mean, I know that kind of goes against what many might think, but for me, I find it a bit more useful. I do think having a chronograph on this list that also has attributes that I mentioned, water resistance, and also having the ability to have some great legibility, I think is also important here. So I'm gonna mention the Tudor Black Bay Chrono. 
I don't want to mention the silver dial version because that one in terms of legibility might not be as good as the black one. I think there's better contrast on that. So in the kitchen where you just need to look at something at a glance, I think this will be better. Also getting some chronograph function with some screw down uh, pushers as well. So you're getting 200 meters of water resistance there. These have become pretty difficult to get. People absolutely went nuts over these. And for good reason, these are fantastic watches getting a B01 movement from Breitling, which I just gave props to just a moment ago. And now you're getting in a package that is around $5,000 at retail. I mean, it just makes a ton of sense. And there's no question why these watches uh, became so popular immediately when they were released at Watches and Wonders this year. So now for the last occupation, and this one's kind of a joke. Again, this is all in good fun. So don't take everything in this video so seriously, but I want to look at what about just being retired and what watch should be on your wrist? I think the best way to look at this is kind of some different personas around being retired. Say you're somebody that's retired in a tropical paradise or you're you know, by the beach or something like that. Uh, you're in hot weather. I think that's one scenario. Maybe you have somebody that just is so tired of society and is kind of just out in the wilderness. Then maybe that's another scenario. And then say you have that really affluent person that just retired and want this really killer watch that is kind of just a culmination of their years and years of hard work. Maybe they were an executive or something of that sort. Uh, so just looking at three different options as just a fun way to kind of round this out. Now, first looking at that individual that's maybe in a tropical environment, they're maybe in a hot, humid environment and they're maybe at the beach sometimes. I think the Rolex Submariner just makes so much sense. If you've ever been around Florida and any of you know places like Naples or Miami, I mean, Rolex Submariners are freaking everywhere. I see it like on every person's wrist. You can look at the new uh, reference here, the 126610LN. New case size, uh, new generation of movements. I think I don't need to belabor the point of the Submariner, but if it's just that one watch that you could just wear every day in pretty much every single environment, don't have to worry about. Also is just, I think a watch that could be a great retirement kind of just accomplishment uh, in terms of just marking the occasion in a lot of ways. I think Submariner is just a no-brainer. Now transitioning to somebody who has a bit more laid back lifestyle, maybe they're out and enjoying nature, things of that sort, and they want something a bit understated, something that can take a beating, maybe has a bit more heritage design elements within it. I think a Longines Skin Diver is a great option here. Now this is a model that I am a huge fan of. The lugs are a bit too long for myself to pull off, but I think this is just such an attractive looking dive watch in so many ways. and. I just hope that Longines can do some more things with this design style because I just love this thing. Inside, you're getting a reliable movement, 300 meters of water resistance, fantastic design. I just see this as a great everyday companion for somebody that's just going out and about, living their life with nature, and just also just wants something that's a superb watch. Still a great, fantastic watch, uh, but also isn't something that is just so grandiose in its approach and uh, what it's going for. I think this is a fantastic watch you could be proud of, and I think it would just look great in an environment with nature. And now for our last watch on this list, we have the FP Journe Chronomet Resonance. So this is a watch that I have just really come to love. And recently it was in a really cool opportunity. I was in the LA boutique uh, of FP Journe and actually talking to Francois Paul's brother. And he was actually walking us through some of the pieces. And the Resonance is a piece that, you know, of course is I think one of the more popular models from FP Journe, uh, apart from the Elegant and of course the Chronomet Blue. And I think is a just really epitomizes what the brand is all about in many ways. Now, if we're talking about the 2019 version, the newer variants of the Resonance, I don't think it necessarily matters. The newer variants of these will be a single barrel compared to a double barrel system uh, with two oscillating balances in close proximity to one another to create really what the selling point of this watch is with that Resonance. The other interesting thing about this is with that single barrel, it brings on more complication in actually pulling this off. Now, one of the challenges when you're dealing with a unwinding mainspring is that as it unwinds, the torque of that mainspring is going to create a, a different sense of energy that's gonna be released to that gear train. So this could create uh, some issues with the actual amplitude of the movement or just the movement of that balance wheel back and forth. In an ideal world, you want that balance wheel to be rotating in both directions equally in order to be able to set precise time. And that's very important when you're developing a watch. In combination with a remontoire, which is basically just another way to regulate that energy that is being released from that mainspring so that release energy from it as it's unwinding isn't irregular, 
that is just another way that they're able to bypass this. I don't wanna get too nerdy here, but essentially, in other words, this is just, I think, peak watchmaking in a watch that once you have on your wrist, I think you pretty much die happy as long as you live a fulfilling life as well. But all right, guys, that is my list looking at watches for different occupations. I know this is kind of a silly topic, but I kind of have fun with this because it's a little bit different way of approaching watches and what might work on somebody's wrist out there. But what's your occupation and what watch do you find yourself wearing more often than not? And how does it actually maybe have a connection to what you do in the day-to-day? -day? Love to see comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that as it does help out the channel. Also, be sure to check out teddybaldasar.com as well, including that Zenith Chronomaster A386. In addition, definitely follow on Instagram so you can stay up to date with the content. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.